Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. I have a 10 minute video for you, 10 minute watercolor painting, or almost. It, it actually, I intended to do a 10 minute painting and then I just went ahead and kept going and it was technically a 20 minute painting. So uh, this is a sort of 10 minute painting. <laughs> so that first 10 minutes I will have in real time. So if you wanted to follow along, you certainly can. Uh, and then the next 10 minutes I will time lapse just so it doesn't turn out to be a 20 minute video. Uh, but uh, we are technically still in fall, even though we're starting to get into that winter weather, but it's not quite winter yet. So I went ahead and did a fall maple leaf in honor of my favorite season. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So I'm using my size six round brush and going in with just plain water and this video is again a little different from my typical 10 minute watercolor paintings because i did go ahead and lay in a very light sketch to begin with because maple leaves have pretty complex shapes i just wanted to have the proportions be accurate rather than rushing and just having it look all wonky at the end so if you've seen any of my other 10 minute watercolor paintings I don't do an outline sketch because it's just meant to be quick in 10 minutes just lay paint down and have something to show for that time but any other painting I do I will always have an outline sketch and for this particular one because it's a complex enough shape I just wanted to have it accurate so I did look at an image as a reference so I could make sure the proportions were pretty accurate and just have that general maple leaf shape I used a photo from unsplash.com that has copyright free images from a lot of really great photographers on there that is linked in the description and I took a lot of liberties with the coloring on that so really I was mainly using that image as a reference for the shape and some of the general coloring but for the most part once I got into actually painting and using color I kind of uh, went more out of my own head and vision rather than following exactly what the image looked like. So if you want to see the original image, go ahead and uh, you can find that link in the description. And I had to work pretty quickly because I live in a dry climate and the water was drying so fast. I, in some of the portions, like by the time I got to this part here, some of those top edges of the leaf were already dry not 100% dry, but there was no longer sort of a wet sheen to the page anymore because the water had soaked in and dried up a bit. So I had to work pretty quickly to try and lay in that water, that just clean water with a clean brush within the lines of my drawing as much as possible. I tried to um, be careful with staying within the lines. Almost done, I'm just gonna get those last little bottom pieces and then add a thin strip of water to that stem, which of course, by the time I got to it in the actual painting, it had dried, so. But here we go, here's the fun part. So this is the wet into wet technique where you have either plain water or wet paint already underneath and then you lay paint over the top of that. It spreads so nicely. That is one of the sort of qualities of watercolor where when you work wet into wet, everything sort of spreads and flows into each other. That was what I was trying to do with this so I could fill in the water, the, sorry, the color pretty quickly on the leaf and have it be a fairly even field of color. Now, as you'll see, there is a little bit of variation, of course, depending on where the water gathers on the page. But for the most part, it, I was able to lay in a pretty nice, smooth, uh, set of cadmium yellow medium in there. It's just a very nice golden type yellow. Again, if I'm working what seems like at a frenetic pace, that's because I was trying to make sure I got 
all the area of the leaf covered before that water completely dried. So that is why I was kind of working pretty quickly. So if you are struggling with that issue as well, just you can add some more water, but it is nice to try and work as quickly as you can so that uh, your water doesn't dry up. And you can see, I just realized, so sorry, my positioning of the water palette, the watercolor palette wasn't ideal. Some of it is going off the bottom of the edge, the bottom of the frame. So apologies for that, didn't position it very well. But you can see I have a kind of wood, a different wood board behind this little watercolor notebook than I normally do. Normally I'm just right on the desk surface, but I have another kind of longer term painting going on that's a, a sort of attached to the desk surface and I didn't want to mess with that so I just took a panel board and laid it over that other painting I'm currently working on so that I could put this on top without worrying about the painting underneath getting damaged and you can see a little corner of it peeking out right at the top right so so that I'll be excited when that's finished and be able to do a longer video or a time lapse video of that longer painting for you soon so you may notice that I went ahead and add a little added a little bit of those kind of lines of where the veins of the leaf go and they just very lightly maintain themselves when i went over with that layer so i wanted that specifically to have a hint of those veins and then i did add a little very little bit of water back onto the stem not a ton not as wet as the actual leaf was and i'm going in with an alizarin crimson this very deep pinky red so uh, that I have that very vibrant stem. Trying to be very careful. Normally I would use a thinner tip brush, but I didn't feel like changing out brushes and getting the finer tip brush. So I just went with this one, which did serviceably well. And there you can see how wonderful that bleeding effect of wet into wet goes when you have especially more contrasting colors. So I have a very uh, deep red over the lighter yellow and it's just fanning out as the water hits the water. Perfect for that type of vein and coloring you might see around the veins of a maple leaf. Yeah, this portion had started to dry a little bit, so you can see the, the paint doesn't spread as much as some of the other portions that have more water. So I tried to go in and re-wet some of those areas that were drying too quickly. I'm just very hardly hovering above the surface for these, to be honest, for those veins. Um, I wanted it to be, it's, uh, the red is so vibrant. Uh, I didn't want it to be a huge amount that would spread all over the place. So I was pretty sparing with it, very lightly brushing over the top, the page's surface. Uh, and then, so those lines are a little more subtle as well. So I almost could have left it right there just about, but I had about um, a minute left really. Oh, more than a minute actually. I had a couple minutes left. So I went ahead and um, here added the signature because I thought, oh, almost done. I bet I'm running out of time. And then I looked at the clock and thought, oh, 
I still have some more time, which is why I then started to add a couple more details and shadow to the leaf. And then realizing that that shadow was gonna take much longer than I had expected. So hence why this painting turned into a 20 minute painting instead of a 10 minute one. But you can see there, and I made the mistake, part of, uh, if this would have been a lot better if I had waited for that leaf, all the paint on the leaf to dry completely so it was bone dry, and then gone in with wet, uh, plain wet paint to do the shadow. I mean, plain wet water, sorry, my words are getting mixed up today. Uh, just the wet water and then the darker uh, Payne's Gray for the shadow. But of course, that paint wasn't dry yet and I was rushing, so it started to bleed into each other a bit, more than I would have liked. So I had to do a little bit of damage control in a, in a second here. But so I started to add that shadow and right there was 10 minutes, the timer went off. So now we're time-lapsed. I went ahead and blotted up some of that paint wanted to make some of the yellow a little bit darker and then I went in with my fine tip brush here the round tip brush and added uh, some shadowing and that just took a little while because I wanted to have it be smooth uh, smooth the edges and this is also just kind of the shadowing is just from my own imagination what I imagine it might be uh, because the original image of this leaf I believe was it looks like the leaf is floating on top of water so there's not really a shadow so I just had to kind of make it up so uh there you go just if the light was shining about kind of directly overhead maybe slightly to the right because I made the shadow on the left side of the leaf just a little bit bigger and darker in general but filling that in and then smoothing out the edges with the cleaned brush and that's kind of really all it took for the next 10 minutes to do the shadows. Oh, and I did go ahead and add some splatter so there's some sort of dappling, almost like little brown specks in that leaf. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd greatly appreciate it. Until my next one, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. God bless, and I'll see you soon.